Hi everyone and welcome to some game analysis with me, Simon Williams, Ginger GM, blah blah blah. And um, I'm about to show you some very, well, a combination of a couple of games in one video of an extremely interesting way to play against the King's Indian defence. Now, what I'm going to show you here is really in conjunction with my Killer D4 DVD. I recommended this setup as white, but things develop over time and I want to keep you guys up to date with the latest developments. And I'm going to base this on two games which have been played very recently over the last couple of days of filming this video from a good friend of mine, uh, Ivan Sokolov. Now, Ivan Sokolov has filmed two DVDs for Ginger GM and you can go to the shop there's a coupon available as you can see in big text where you can get 30% off his DVDs at the moment I think that actually they are brilliant DVDs I have to say that but I really believe it and at the moment he's playing a match against the current Dutch champion Jordan van Forest who is an incredibly credible talent only 17 years old and he's won both of his games with White against Jordan's King's Indian defence. So that is something quite special because Jordan is an incredibly strong player. We'll come up to the chess very shortly. But first of all, just to give you a glimpse into the character of Ivan, I'm going to show you a little clip now, um, which is one of the, the funniest chess clips I've ever seen. It's only 15 seconds long and... This was after this was taken on an interview with Ivan after he lost the game, I, I think against Hikaru Nakamura when he was completely winning. And they caught him on camera just after his loss, and he was understandably feeling a little bit pissed off, shall we say, a little bit annoyed. And this is his response. So uh, just sit back and enjoy this. It's, it's, it's hilarious. And then we'll go on to the game. Ivan, up to one point it seemed like a beautiful game. I was completely winning. If I don't kill myself tonight, I'm going to live a thousand years. Boom! <laughs> if I don't kill myself tonight, I'm going to live a thousand years. Quite possibly the best ever response, I think, to a... Um, interview ever and then rock starring running out of there afterwards uh, brilliant brilliant okay well on with the game so um the move order played in the game started with c4 but of course we can get the same thing here with the move d4 and th this will be the move order i would play and most of you are going to get but we'll see it comes to normal territories very shortly knight f6 knight c3 and g6 now, this opening with bishop g7, the king's Indian defense, is one of the most popular openings that black can play. It was being played by Bobby Fischer, Gary Kasparov, nowadays Hikaru, Rajabov, and at club level, you'll see it in, in a large majority of your game. So it's very important to have a good opening as white against this. Now, Ivan transposes in the main line, king's Indian, with e4, d6, d4, Bishop g7. And this is the main starting point of the King's Indian defence. I mean, the, the normal move order to get this would be d4, knight to f6, c4, g6, knight c3, bishop g7, e4. And we get the same thing. Um, now, after bishop g7, there are a number of ways to play against this setup. But the line I recommend in killer d4 is as follows, and it's the line that Ivan played here. Now, I don't believe Ivan um, copied this from me. I mean, he's, he has some amazing ideas of himself, but it's quite amusing that we both came to the same conclusion that this variation is a very good way of playing. And also, one of the great things about this is it avoids a lot of theory. There's hardly any theory on this, and you get to shove Gary and Harry up the board. What can be better? So what is the line here? Well, we start with bishop e2. The main line is knight to f3 here, but we don't play that. We go bishop e2, and now black castles. And again, the main line would be something like knight to f3, but here we go bishop to e3. 
So we develop our bishops first, and there's an important reason for this. I used to play moves like h4 or g4 in this position, but the problem with these moves is, let's take g4, is that black has a very good counter strike, and that, in my opinion, is c5. And these type of positions, you want to push on with d5, but then black goes e6 quickly. And he will open up the e-file and get good pressure against your king. So I came to the conclusion myself that you should first develop your bishops first, as Ivan does here. So this is stage, as we say, one of the plan. Bishop e2, bishop e3. We'll do this in stages. And then after black's most common move here, which is e5, most kings in defence players will play this. I mean, even if they don't do it straight away, even if they go knight b d7 or knight a6 first, we're going to do the same plan. But after, we'll come to what happens after e5 in a second. But the good thing about this is that you really try to aim against the move d5 here. Why, why is, d, uh, sorry, c5, why is c5 not so good for black now? Well, first of all, you haven't committed your pawns on the king's side, so you can always castle that way now safely. But there's a very good move here, I think, and that is e5. And this move here, which is not really possible with the bishop on c1, I think gives white a very comfortable position. For example, knight to e8 is the computer's first suggestion, and now I actually simply think pawn takes d6, and just something with knight to f3 in this position and i think white is just very comfortable here um so i don't think c5 is a good answer now against this bishop development here so instead well e5 is what you'll face most of the time so e5 is what jordan played and now against e5 we always push on with d5 now in this game only played yesterday so a very recent game um, Jordan tried to improve on his first game against Ivan and he played knight to a6. Now we'll come back to the first game where he played a5 a bit later, but knight to a6 is now leading to this brilliant, it's a brilliant game. So what is White's idea after this bishop development? Well, stage two is to play g4. Come on, Gary. And this has two ideas in mind. The first idea is a very positional idea. In the King's Indian defence, when black has played e5, black's main break is f5 at some moment. So black often wants to go knight to e8 and f5. But now that we've played the move g4, we can always take on f5 with our g-pawn. And this will open up the g line towards black's king. So, for example, let's say knight to e8 is played. Well, here I'd probably play queen d2, getting ready to castle queenside and encouraging black to go f5. And after f5, I'll simply take with my g-pawn. And here I'd play something like bishop g5 first. And then I don't know what black will play. Let's say knight to f6. And now knight to f3 and rook g1 something like this i mean don't totally trust the computer's assessment here i don't really believe this and this is one way to play i mean if your computer worry because there's a long-term attack here another thing we can simply do here is to play a move well queen d2 is fine and after f5 we can take twice on f5 we don't have to play bishop g5 if you want to stick with the computer's assessment and again long term wise the opening of the g-file is going to give us fantastic compensation to attack the black king. And again, try not to worry too much about the computer. I put it up there for a change just to try something new. But I really think to improve as a chess player, you don't get carried away with the computer's assessment. So this is the standard idea of g4. It actually comes from another line in the king's Indian, which is extremely popular now. Let me just show you that line because I'm trying to just show you everything you need to know. And that line in the king's Indian... Instead of playing bishop to e2, the, one of the main lines now is knight to f3, castles kingside, and now h3. And it actually has a similar idea to what we're going to see in the main line that Ivan plays. And that is after something like e5, d5. If knight to e8 in some position, we play g4 again. 
and the pawn on h3 supports g4. But there's so much theory on this that, you know, it's really hard to keep up the latest developments. And in the way Ivan plays and I play bishop e2, castles bishop e3, um, e5, d5. And now whatever happens, we're going to play g4. This is our idea. Let's say knight a6, g4. There's less theory. It's easy to learn. And also, we can now start pushing our h-pawn all the way to h5, which is not as easy to do when our pawn's on h3. Look how Ivan plays this. It's simply brilliant. c6. Now, in my original killer d4, I recommend here a setup with white with f3. Knight h3 to f2. Now, I want to tell you about the latest developments here. And the latest developments is, and the way I suggest you play, okay, what I suggest is all right in a DVD, but I think the way Van plays this is even better, and it's a lot more fun. So that is with g5 immediately. Just keep on pushing. We've got to roll, roll, roll. And now the knight's on f6 has to move and it can't move to h5 because again we can see a, a positive for having our bishop on e2 so it has to go somewhere like e8 and what do we do here harry come on h4 and the idea of this is to play h5 get ourselves an open h file later on we can attack on that and one thing you must always remember in this structure when you have these three pawns in the center of the board is that white is also going to be in control in the center and on the queen side because you have the space advantage there and where you have a space advantage you're generally going to be better so even if we don't checkmate on the king side which we're not always going to do we can play on the queen side and we'll see how Ivan did this a bit later on in his first game but first of all let me show you this beautiful game well Jordan now try to break with f5 and now we can see another idea of this g pawn March. What should we do here? Well, how we're going to meet f5 is always by playing on pass on. This takes away the strong f pawn from black, and after knight takes f6, we see another point to have in our h pawn here, h5. Opening up the h file and really weakening the black king side. Already, I think black is in quite serious trouble here, even though the computer doesn't think it's too bad for black. The black king is weaker, it's going to be under fire. We are going to try to aim to castle queenside, probably. Now, Jordan played queen a5. And now Ivan just opened up the h-file. And here, well, you could play pawn takes g6. But after king f1, probably shouldn't castle queenside now because Jordan's put some pieces over there. In actual fact, there's two ways, two places to put your king in this variation. You either put your king on c1 or very often you put it on f1 and this seems to be a van's preferred way of playing put it on f1 put it on g2 so this may be even a better way than castling queenside now in the game jordan tried to counterattack when knight takes e4 but now after pawn takes h7 his king becomes very weak king to h8 and now knight to f3 Knight takes c3, and now simply pawn takes c3. We're not ever concerned about queen takes pawn check, because our king's going to f1 anyway. Now, the game gets fantastic now. Pawn takes d5, and king to f1 just played. And the point is that Ivan, at some point, has this very strong idea of going knight h4, knight g6, checkmate. Fantastic idea. And I'm going to show you a game where I used exactly the same idea later on. Now, bishop to f5, and here comes this idea. Knight to h4. Brilliant. If that bishop ever moves away from this diagonal, knight to g6 is a very pretty checkmate. Black took on c4, but now white's bishop comes into the attack as well. A fantastic diagonal for that bishop. Rook c8. And a brilliant move here. A brilliant, brilliant move. Remember what I said about diverting this bishop. All we have to do is divert that bishop. Our knight can then come in. Bishop e6. Fantastic. Maybe a move that black missed. If bishop takes bishop, knight g6 is checkmate. Bishop e4. Now we keep bringing in the, the firepower. Queen g4. Another brilliant move. And the point here is if bishop takes rook... Okay, knight g6 is not immediately checkmate because our rook is not defending the pawn. But after king takes pawn, 
queen check, bishop has to block, queen takes bishop, it is checkmate. So after queen g4, black's position is crumbling, black play bishop d3 check, king g1. The white king perfectly safe here, look at all the white pieces, the white pieces just crowding around over here. Rook to e8, and now bishop to f5, so finally diverting the bishop away from this pawn. Bishop takes bishop, and now another move which is just so attractive to play. Queen takes f5. Boom! And again, the point is, if rook takes queen, we have this reoccurring idea of knight g6, checkmate. Lovely, lovely game from Ivan. So black can't take that bishop. Instead, he has to play. After queen takes f5, something. Rook f6. Only move to defend knight to g6, checkmate. The game is over now. Bishop g5, trying to force the defender of g6 away. And if you take the queen, knight g6 is checkmate again. So rook e6, and now it's just a mop-up job. Knight g6 check. Black has to lose more material. Rook f8. Bishop e7. He's losing more material. Rook takes f2. And okay, in this position, there's, there's a thousand ways to win here. Probably the simplest way is using Harry in an extreme way. Just look at Harry. What a champion he has been. By going queen takes g7 and harry 8 with a completely winning position. So a very beautiful game there for an Ivan, from Ivan. And now let's just go back to a game he played three days ago against Jordan again. And we're going to see how Jordan lost again. Um, but he played in, in a slightly different way. So after bishop f uh, e3 he played e5. But here instead of playing knight to a6 we just looked at he played a5. Now, what are our plans here if you're going to play this system? Well, plan one is to go bishop e2, bishop e3. Stage one, remember this. Stage two is to meet e5 with d5. Stage two. Stage three, which is our main concept behind putting our bishops here, is to go g4. Stage three is g4. And then stage four is harry four and harry five. These are the really the four stages you need to remember. So here... Ivan played g4, stage 3, and now knight to a6, an actual fact, well, the g-pawn keeps pushing, again, we can still call this stage 3, g5. <coughs> the knight goes back to e8, so we've pushed the g-pawn as far as it can go, what is stage 4? h4, of course. And the point being, if black ever plays f5, we take on, pass on, and go h5. And in this game, well, we can see now that Ivan first of all does stage four and now he simply develops you can see the computer always gives this also already gives this a big advantage to white and now he just plays on the queen side and this is what I mentioned earlier once you have control of the king side this idea of knight d2 and trying to eventually play b4 gives you control of both areas of the board so you have to play quite flexibly and let's just see how Ivan played this a4 b4 so he comes on the queen side. We have an exchange on a1. And this is why this knight manoeuvre to d2 is very important. The knight on d2 defends b3. The knight has to retreat. And now king f1. Again, the king goes to this square. Knight b4, queen b1. And now white plays an excellent move, swapping off black's only active piece. And eventually here we can see that after some exchanges, white, again, remember when black plays f5, you take on pass on. That should be another rule to bear in mind. And here we can see this taking as soon as black plays this move f5, as he did in the previous game, you take on pass on, you take on g6, and the black king becomes weak. King g2, rook c7, rook c1. And eventually Ivan, with very careful and good play, comes to attack on the king side. And we can see all the pieces coming slowly around there. And here he wins a crucial pawn. The last piece comes in with ideas, a knight to h6, and it's clearly winning for Ivan. So it's a very simple idea, the three sta the stages. I mean, I'll go for it one more time, and I'm going to show you a game the I play, which remind, reminded me of this, this brilliant game of events. And um, let's just 
go through the stages so we try to get them stuck into your mind so in the mainline king's indian stage one you put your bishops on e2 and e3 stage one when your opponent plays e5 you go d5 you could say that's stage two if you go c5 you go e5 don't worry too much about that so stage two meet e5 with d5 and then whatever happens we get to the fun stage and that is pushing the g pawn as far as you can push it g4 and after anything like knight c6 g5 and when the knight moves now stage four harry h4 if black ever plays f5 you always take on pass on and then you push with the h pawn and the idea of this is to create all these weaknesses on the black king side now let me show you a game i played a number of years ago and and this was a game against english i am richard palliser who's now a prolific author and this was played in actually 2000 16 years ago bloody hell a long time ago and we got to this position now against richard i played h4 first i wouldn't play this nowadays i would play bishop e3 first that so it, it, but it still has some similarities. Sorry, let me just get back to the position there. I would play bishop e3 first because... Why do I play bishop e3 first? I want to try and aim against c5. I don't like the c5 move. That's why I put my bishop here first. Now, in the game against Richard, I played h4. And just watch how it's so similar to Ivan's game. c5 played. The move I'm worried about, d5, e, and now a6. And, and now Richard picks the wrong plan. Had he gone e6 here, I think that black gets very good counterplay on the e file. That's why I don't play this line anymore. But let's have a look what happens. a6, a4, he plays e6 anyway, h5, he takes on d5, I take on g6. So look how Harry does the job again, d4. And here, really, black should just take back on g6 with either the h-pawn or, or the f-pawn. And then I think he's totally comfortable. He, sh he should eliminate Harry as soon as he can. Don't let Harry go go running up the board. Instead, d4. And now look how it resembles the Yvan game. I take on h7, king h8, knight d5, knight takes e4, and now knight to f3. And my plan here is again to get a knight to g6. Just watch how it happens. Bishop g4, knight h4. Rook e8, knight to f4. Because in this game, my opponent has a pawn on f7, I have to get two knights threatening to come to g6. And now the threat is knight g6 with checkmate. For example, if bishop takes e2, knight to g6. Pawn takes g6, knight takes g6. Exactly the same checkmate that Avan was going for. Very funny, very amusing that this is 16 years ago, but it's the same theme. Now, in this game... I'm going to go through it very quickly. Queen f6 was played because it involves some nice tactics. I played f3. I sacked my rook because here I had a specific idea. g5. If queen takes g5, I win the queen with knight check. Queen had to go back to d8. And now queen d3. And my main idea is to get knight g6 in. This is the one thing I'm trying to do. So it's worth the sacrificed rook. My opponent played bishop e5, but now... I think one of my best attacks I've done starts here. Knight g6 check anyway. Pawn takes knight. I give up a knight. King g7. If king takes pawn there, let's say in that position, well, I have very good discovered check now. Knight takes e5. And the combination of these three pieces is going to lead to checkmate or serious material loss for black, as you can see from the computer's assessment. So my opponent played king g7. And now the key move, queen h3. And just look at how Harry has helped me win the game. He's such a good friend of mine. My opponent played bishop g3 check. Okay, I moved my king simply. And now he grabbed the piece. But now queen h6 check. The point being, it, he has to go to f5. If he goes to g7, uh, to f7, I have bishop h5 check, king e7, queen g7 check king here and now bishop g4 and this is what i call a, a crisscross checkmate here crisscross the king is trapped there so his king comes to f5 but now it is checkmate can you see the checkmate well you should be able to because komodo up there is helping you out bishop g4 check 
Now, if king takes bishop, queen h3 is checkmate, king e5, and now queen g7 check, queen g6 check, and queen f5 would have been checkmate. So that, that's my little, uh, you know, the, the time I played this. But all in all, I think this, this, I wanted to show you this video because I think it's very current. So you guys could use it in your own games. Um, and if you're not sure what to do against King's Indian, this idea that a van's come up with, which is slightly different to the idea I had in mind of simply pushing your G pawn as far as it can go, and then combining this with the H pawn in the position. So after knight e8, h4, I think is a fantastic idea. And it's a great way of meeting the King's Indian defense. It's a great way of avoiding a lot of theory and it can lead to, um, well, some very exciting games. So current stuff, only a day old. I hope you guys get some good victories. That's really to accompany my uh, D4, uh, Killer D4 DVD. And if you want to see more of Ivan's great learnings, as you can see, we're offering a discount only till the end of this month. So for about another, should we say, 12 days or so. And that's to buy Ivan's DVDs, uh, digital download, for 30% off and I promise you you won't regret it you won't regret it I will personally give you a refund if you if you think they're they're not worth the purchase price they are brilliant DVDs I have to do a little sales pitch because you know it just has to be done occasionally anyway I hope you enjoyed the video please like please subscribe to my channel when I get to 10,000 subscribers I'm gonna do a mammoth stream catch you all later thanks for now goodbye